Um, can you guys hear me? So we'll get started in a, a couple minutes. I'm just going to let people file in a little bit, start in just like two minutes here. Also, by the way, if any of you have any difficulty with um, installing Node.js or Angular, just um, send me a question. And yeah, so also for this workshop, there is a, a folder of images I provided. It's a Google Docs link. It's on the live site if you go to like um, where this workshop is listed. Um, it should give you some download links and the very last one is a Google Docs link. I can't uh, really post it in the chat because it's in Q&A mode. So let me see, hold on. Hello? Yes, so I'm having difficulties installing the Angular. So do I use the Node.js command line or the one on the PC? Um you can use uh you can use either. I would you can use uh if you're using PCI, you can just use command prompt. Um if you're on Mac you can use terminal. It should work well, for you. I tried in both. I tried in the command prompt and I tried in the node.js terminal shell, but it's not working anywhere. Does it? Um, what type of error does it give you? It says npm is not recognized as an internal or external command operable program or that file. Um, have you installed Node.js? Yes, I did. That's weird. Um, I tried running it in the Node.js shell, but there it says it must be installed from the command prompt outside the shell. That's strange. Um, you might, I think maybe for Windows, I don't know whether Node.js sets path variables. You might have to, um, you might have to manually set the path variable for that like uh, navigates to NPM. I'm not 100% sure. I was under the impression that should have just installed it globally. Okay, let me try that thing. And hey, once again, anybody else, if anybody is having trouble, you can just shoot me a question. Um, so I'll let you guys get all this together and we'll start in a couple minutes. Is everything going okay in here? Yeah, I just uh, some people are having trouble installing Angular. Yeah, of course. So I'm, I'm giving some people some time. Sounds good, sounds good.
I see. So it seems like my antivirus is blocking the Node.js installation for some weird reason. Oh, okay. I don't know why it is. It's weird. I'm going to hop out to go check on some other things, but um, just message me if you guys need any help. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, if you guys are ready, could you just send me a, a quick uh, question or just in the QA, just mention that you're ready. Okay, I'll give you guys uh, two more minutes if you're still not ready, but I, I would like to start at 110 if we can. Okay, guys, so it's uh, 110. Uh, we're going to get started. If you are having any trouble um, and you still weren't able to install everything, I, I think you should still be able to follow along just all right. All right, so let's uh, begin. So uh, just a little bit about me. My name is uh, Paul Scott. I'm a senior here at Penn State studying computer science and minoring in mathematics. Uh, so today's workshop, workshop is going to be talking about Angular, which is a web development framework that's developed by Google, which can be used to develop modern, very nice uh, web applications. 
So uh, you might have heard of Angular. It's sort of in the similar realm to like React or Vue.js. It's just sort of a more modern way to make websites and web applications rather than just sort of using <clears throat> HTML, CSS, like by default, just the standard way. Um, there's a lot of uh, big advantages to using web frameworks like Angular over just um, coding websites the old fashioned way which we'll be going into in a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we are going to want to uh, create our project. So assuming that you guys have both have installed Angular properly, what you wanna do now is you wanna open either a terminal window or a command prompt. So I'm gonna go do that right now. Let me share that. Okay. So once you have your terminal or command prompt open, depending on whether you're using Mac or Windows, you're going to want to navigate to the folder uh, where you want to create your project. <clears throat> so uh, in this case, I'm just going to make it on my desktop. You can put it in like your documents folder. It doesn't really matter where you put it. I just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to put it on my desktop. So what we want to do now is we're going to want to generate the project. So when you've installed Angular, Angular sort of its keyword, its command is ng. So any Angular command that you're going to use once it's installed uses this ng command. And this will be, we'll use it a couple times for different purposes. Uh, but the command we want to use is ng new. Um, ng new is going to generate the project. And then after ng new, we're going to put the project name and I'm just going to call this Angular Workshop. And then so once that's done, just hit enter and it will generate the project. Just accept, um, accept all of the default options. Um, they're not super important right now. And it should uh, start generating the project. Just wait for that to finish. It takes a little bit because it has to install um, a couple pretty decently sized dependencies that all Angular projects need. So it does take a little bit, but it shouldn't take a crazy amount of time to install. Let's see here. And by the way, once um. Once the project is finished generating, just um, you can notify me in the chat just to make sure that everyone's sort of at the same level. Okay, so it finished right now. So I'll wait for a couple people to mention that they're at this point. Oh, to okay. So, see, some people are mass people want it. Yeah. So, just accept accept all the default options. It asks for Angular routing. Just say no. Accept CSS. Just accept all of the default options. And the command uh, that you want to use. Uh, let me scroll back up to that. It's um, ng new, and then the name of the project, which I called Angular Workshop here. Okay. Yeah, sadly, some of this installing uh, stuff can be kind of not, doesn't always work very perfectly as you'd want it to. So I'm sorry to anyone who's having some trouble with this, especially like just working with the command line in general. Okay. Yeah, so, all right, so I'm going to move on, but once again, the command is ng new, and then the name, I called it Angular Workshop, and then 
just make sure that when it asks like for angular routing and which style sheet, just just accept the defaults just accept just say no to angular routing and css for the style sheet um, i had a question so yeah i just got a bunch of errors and like after that it ended with like some fatal errors which said like fatal unable to auto detect email address run get config something something what was the issue I'm sorry, I didn't quite yeah. hear that. Yeah, so it's, I'm getting a bunch of warnings on the command line. Then I'm getting run with config dash dash global user dot email. And after that, there's like fatal unable to auto detect email address. Um, strange. Uh, where are you at generating the project? Um, in desktop. On the desktop, is yeah. did it, like a folder show up once you did that? Like even yes, with the yes, warnings. It did. Okay, so it's yes. what's uh. Okay, so did it um. All right, so that I'm I'm hoping that that still worked. Uh, regardless. I think it's because the gate is missing. Like I did not configure my Git account here. So. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm not really I'm not really sure what those warnings are. Uh, just for sake of time, I've got to move on to the yeah, next okay. step. Yeah, okay. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, this is never I mean, especially like a virtual workshop. Not everything's going to go smoothly, sadly. Okay, so anyway, once you have installed and it's on wherever you installed it, whether it's on your um, desktop or whatnot, uh, what we're going to do now is open up our IDE. So I recommended VS Code. You can also use like WebStorm or any other sort of web development, but I think VS Code is just one of the simpler ones. So what we're going to do is open up VS Code, and I'll share that once I get that open. Okay. And uh, I already navigated to it previously, but um, so you want you just make you want to open the root folder of the of the workshop. So if what you'll know you're in the root folder if you see these uh, node modules, source, um, just all of these files here. It should be it should look exactly the same like this. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do here is we're going to start just sort of laying out our website. So this, what we're going to be making is just kind of a really basic um, web page that it's going to have like a header um, that will eventually have a search bar. And I'll explain what that's for in a second. Um, but we'll have, I decided just uh, for, uh, just as sort of a fun thing to do. I, uh, the images that you downloaded are like six or so. Um, just works of art with a name. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create a bunch of containers that show the image, uh, show the painting image, show the title, uh, just really basic. But we're going to be doing it the Angular way rather than what you would normally do. So the first thing that I want to talk about with Angular is what's known as a component. So a component is sort of a higher level idea. It's you can, I think the best way to describe it is like, think about if you go to uh, any normal web page, like you see there's a header, there may be like a sidebar, there's content. And so you can sort of break up a website into components. Like the, the header can be a component, the content or like the sub content on a website can be a component, the footer can be a component. Like, so what you and how you break up things into components is sort of subjective. It's really up to you. But the idea of a component is a isolated uh, piece of HTML, CSS, and uh, TypeScript code. So it's sort of this, it's isolated, it's independent, and it can be sort of used to um, just kind of one for code organization and just for so that also you have one place where you can have um, for example, maybe you have code that's repetitive. You can turn it into a component and only store it in one location. 
So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to generate a component. So if you are in VS Code, you can just drag up from the bottom and it should reveal a terminal. If you're not using VS Code, um, you can just navigate to the root of the Angular project and just run the commands from a terminal or command prompt uh, there. But uh, VS Code has a very nice feature where it just sort of has a built-in terminal. So to generate a component, what we want to do in the root of the project, not on the not the folder, but in the root project here, what we want to do is run the Angular command ng um, component. Oh, I'm sorry, ng generate component. And then we're going to give the component a name. So the first component we're going to work on is the header. So I'm just going to call it header and we'll hit enter. Okay, so once that's done, you'll see that it's generated four files. And if we go into the app header, uh, we'll see that it generated four files, a uh, uh, style sheet, CSS file, an HTML file, um, a TypeScript file, and a spec.typescript file. You don't have to worry about the spec TypeScript. That's for testing the TypeScript. It's really uh, it's not too important right now. Um, but these are the four files that you'll be working with. And the thing about this component is if you open up, so like open up the HTML, you can see here uh, right now, it just auto generates this like, just this P tag that says, you know, header works or whatever. It just, that's what it does. That's what it auto generates. But the first thing you'll notice about this HTML is there's no like, HTML head, there's no HTML tags, there's none of that. It's just sort of sort of a lone HTML. And the reason for that is because of how Angular compiles. So if you take a look at source index, this is index HTML. This is like the normal uh, root file that the web page uses. And you can see here, there's our head tag and the HTML tag that we're used to. The body tag is all here. Um, and so much like a normal website, this is going to be the root. However, you will really not be touching this file. The only reason that you'd want to touch this file is like if you want to change the title, maybe you want to change the favicon to something else. But for the most part, you're not going to be doing work in this file. Let me see, there's a question. How did you get the command line? Okay, so uh, in VS Code, if you just like look, there's like a blue line down here. You should just be able to drag up on it and it will bring up a terminal. Okay, so, so you'll notice here though that the body, the only thing that's contained in it is this app root. And so what this refers to is this code here. In the source app file, you can see app component, app CSS, TypeScript, almost like the same four files we just generated with header. And if you click on this, so you'll see there's a bunch of um, auto-generated code. This is just what Angular initializes with. You can actually just go right ahead and delete all of that. We're, we don't need any of it. Um, but so this is where we're actually going to be doing all of our work. That is what, um, this is where our website's going to be laid out. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to add the header component we just created. I know we didn't work on it yet, but we can still work with it. We can still add it to our app. So what we want to do is when we generate a component, it automatically also generates a tag, like a tag, like as if an HTML tag for it. And because we're in the app folder, it um, prepends app to the beginning. So what we're going to add, we're going to do app header. So you can see that the header, that's the exact same name of the component that we just generated. Um, and so what this is going to do, in a sense, is put the component uh, that we, whatever HTML we generate here, it's just going to replace this with that. Uh, that's what happens when Angular will compile, which I'll show uh, in a second. But anyway, let's go back to the header and let's actually start making changes to it. If we go to header component HTML. Uh, so let's keep this simple. We're just going to make uh, a div ID will be header. 
uh, since it's a unique element, we're not going to have multiple headers. I'm just setting it to ID. Uh, and so now what we want to do is uh, with those uh, with those images that I had you guys download, I also sort of created like a logo uh, for the website that I just decided just to put in the header. So if you can go, what you now want to do to get those images into Angular, uh, you want to just get all the images, don't not the folder that it's they're contained in, but if you take those images and you go to source assets, so the assets folder is where you're going to find all your images, all your icons, any sort of non code that's used for your website. And so what you want to do is you want to take those and just copy them. So I have I've copied them from my computer. We'll go into source assets and you can see it just has a git keep right now. And I'm just going to drag those into there. Okay. Okay, so let me know um, if you guys are good so far, whether you followed along to this point. Just kind of want to make sure everybody's uh, on the same track here. Just make sure that you get all these images into the assets folder. All right. Oh, I, I had downloaded them from my computer. I just dragged them. Let's see. Yeah, so I dragged them from my computer. I, I had them downloaded. And um, let me see, I'm not able to use CSS and VS. I'm not exactly, uh, I'm not exactly, sh uh, what do you mean like you can't use uh, CSS and VS? Like, can you not open CSS files in v Visual Studio? I see, Vian, you can go if you want to explain your question. Hey, are you using, um, Hello? yeah, I can hear you. Yes, yeah, so exactly. Uh, like my VS is open right now and mm -hmm. it just says like the users slash my name. And after that, I can't get the terminal window, like how you got it, like where you wrote ng generate com component header header. I, I've installed all the CSS files and everything, but I can't use the terminal window. Oh, so wait, so you, were you able to successfully generate the project? Yeah, I was able to uh, generate the project and mm -hmm. like install the CSS files in my CMD and everything, but I'm not able to use a terminal window on VS. Are you, do you have, um, do you have the root of the root angular? Are you like, do you have the root angular folder open in VS code right now? I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not really sure. So what what you should see in your ang in so if you navigate, uh, if you want to open the file, what you do is you just go to file open and just um, wherever you generated the Angular project, um, okay. just open that folder, and you should see these. Okay, so you should see the E2E folder, the Node Modules folder, and the Source folder. And then all these files here. Okay, okay I, I got, I got it, I got it. Okay, cool. Um, so, and have you, um, have you generated the component, the header component yet? No, I'm gonna uh, do it now after I'm, I'm done importing it. Okay, awesome. Okay, so anyway, going back to the header component, we want to add the image. Uh, this logo that's just going to be for the top of our website. Uh, so we'll just add an image tag here. And for the source, the nice thing here is we can just um, we can just directly reference the assets folder. We don't need to like go. We don't like need to use this notation to go up a couple folders to get to it. We could just directly do assets, and in this case, it's called logo.svg. So I'll just put that here and we'll just close that off. So just really simple, uh, just this HTML. And you can see that that's really all it is. That's what this component is to be defined as. Um, 
Okay, so the next thing I want to do is we're going to add stylings for the header as well. So what you'll notice here is because every component has CSS, um, they, the CSS of every component is independent. So for example, I'll show you in a second. So I'll add some stylings for the header. But what you, if for any reason in any other component, I also have like a, an, a header tag for some reason, um, if it was in a different component, then this CSS would not affect it because all the components are sort of independent of each other. So this CSS will only be applied to this header component. It's only going to be applied to this HTML that we've generated. It's not going to apply um, to any others. Now, the only exception to that is if like you had a component within a component, that might um, that might change things up a little bit. But in this case, because we're just going to we're not going to have anything like that, the CSS will have no effect, will only have an effect on the header components HTML and nothing else. So going back to the styles, what I'd like to do is we're going to do um, just you can just sort of copy this verbatim. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to put it at the top, have its position fixed because this will eventually scroll. So I just want to make sure that the header isn't changing. Uh, the width will be 100%. Uh, I'll make the height 6 em. Uh, if you're if you don't know em is just font relative sizing so this means six times the size of the base font which is in this case 16 pixels so that's six times 16 pixels high um, this box sizing border box all that does is i'm going to be adding padding to this header and when i add this line what this means is it includes the padding size in the 6 em height if i didn't include this line, the padding would be in addition to the 6 em height that I specified here. So I'll add, let me see, so 0 0.5 em for top and bottom and 1 em for left and right. I'll make its background white. And then let me see here. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is we're going to add styles for the image. So notice here, like I'm just using the generic image tag. And the reason because the header component only has like one, um, only has one uh, HTML uh, image tag right here. But obviously, and I'll show you that there will be other parts of this program that use the image tag. But this, because of how component isolation works. This image uh, styling is only going to apply to the image in the header. So for this case, I want the image's height to match the header. And then I want it to float to the left side of the screen. Actually, also one last thing just for just for things to look a little nicer. I'm just going to add some box shadow under the header just so there's a separation between the body and the header let's see okay so once we're at this point uh we kind of want to see how this website's going obviously we're, we're just kind of looking at code right now it's not particularly useful if we want to see how we're laying out the website so to run an Angular project in order to compile it, we're going to type, once again, in the root folder, we're going to go back to our terminal down here. And we're going to type uh, ng serve. And what this command does is it not only compiles the Angular code, it also deploys it to your local host. And I'll show you that in a second. So you can actually access it in your web browser and take a look at it. But the nice thing about ng-serve is that you don't need to rerun it when you make changes because ng-serve also what it does is it will listen for changes that you've made to your code and it will automatically update the websites on the local host based on those changes. So once we hit uh, enter here, you can see it'll start to push uh, publish the website to your local host see here yeah so it's compile it'll compile it which what it's doing is it's just compiling everything into 
sort of the more standard HTML, CSS. And that will take a little bit of time, not too much though. It's not a, okay. So once you reach this point and it says compiled successfully, it's done. Now you'll notice that the, um, that the command hasn't exited. And that's because it's still, it's now in a mode where it's listening for any changes that you make in the HTML. And I'll show you that in a second, but what I wanna do right now is bring up the website. So what you wanna do is open any web browser on your computer, doesn't matter. Uh, let me actually share uh, just my desktop in general so I can switch between both of these, okay. So what we're gonna do is you wanna navigate in any of your web browsers, doesn't matter, go to localhost 4200. So that's the default uh, port it will uh, put the website to. And once you hit enter, you can see here, oh, why is it showing that? Give me a second. I thought I deleted in the app component. Hang on a second. Oh, I didn't save the app component. That's why. Okay. So you can actually see once I save that, you can see that the ng serve updated automatically. And if we go back, okay, there we go. So now we can see our header that we made. Uh, you can see there's the image. Um, there's everything. So right now, I mean, components are a nice way to organize code, but really at the moment, you kind of probably thinking like, well, I mean, is that really the only advantage components give us? But of course, no, there's far more advantages that kind of creating an a, a independent component can give us. And so what we're gonna do now is we're going to, as I mentioned, add some like pictures, like a maybe make like a uh, scrolling view of pictures. Uh, what we're gonna do for that is we're gonna create uh, two new components. So if you go back to VS Code, uh, you can leave ng-serve running and just click this plus button here. Um, you can just click the plus button to open another terminal. And uh, what we can do now is just generate, once again, so we're gonna generate two components. Once again, using the ng-generate component commands. And I'm gonna call the first one content, which is just gonna sort of be the body of the website. So I'll hit enter there. And you can see it creates this content folder right there. And then the second one I'm going to create, I'm just going to call painting and hit enter and it generates it. Okay, so for the content, uh, what I'd like to do here, if you go to the content component HTML, once again, I'm just going to kind of create a wrapping div here and I'm just going to call it content and it there. So now we're gonna start to, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our paintings. But as I mentioned, we're gonna kind of, these pictures of paintings we're going to create as their own component. Uh, so really quickly before we do that, I'm just gonna go to the CSS here uh, for, the co for the content. And I'm just gonna make it with 100%, just to, just to make sure it, it spans the whole window. And we'll go to painting and then go do the HTML of the painting. So now what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna create a div that shows the title of the painting and then shows the painting itself. So let's just, let me give it a wrapping div. I'm gonna give it a class this time because we will be using this. This will not be a unique identifier. So I'm gonna call this, I don't know, just call it painting. Okay, so the two things that we wanna add, the first thing is the title, and the second one is the actual image itself. So the title, uh, so right now, I'm just gonna not do this in any sort of generic way. I'm gonna hard code an image and a title, and then I'm gonna show you how to make this component generic so that it can take any title and any image. But for right now, I'm gonna use, I think I have the Mona Lisa in there somewhere. So Mona Lisa, then we'll add an image, source, assets, 
believe it's Mona underscore Lisa dot, and they're all JPEG files. So, okay, so that is the painting component. So that's really it. Just really, really stupid simple. Um, just a div and to a, and then a title and image. Then what I'd like to do here, we'll go into the CSS for the painting, and I'm going to create a styling for the painting class. We'll do with uh, 40 em border radius. Can't spell today. <laughs> Two m says. Think what else? Okay. So let me see what that looks like right now. So, like I said, this is hard coded. Obviously, we want this to be generic, so we can use any. You know, we can put any picture here, any title here. But I just would like to kind of show you right now what this component is going to look like. So if we go back to the content and we go to the content HTML, we're going to just use our painting. We're going to put our painting component in here. So like I've, I've mentioned before, you can put components inside of components. It's not, they don't all have to be sort of on the same level. So we'll put app painting here. And since ng-serve is still running in the background, this should have already updated our website. So let me see here. Awesome, it's not show. Oh, I know why it's not showing up. Forgot to mention that we need to go back into the app component HTML and we need to add the app content below the header. Okay, Let's see if that worked. Yeah, okay, there we go. Um, right now, that doesn't look too good just because of the styling, but you can see here, there's our component, there's the image that we created. Um, just so that may, just to make it a little look a little bit nicer, if we go back to the painting CSS, uh, just add an image tag here, and we're going to specify the width to be a hundred percent of the containing div. And then if we go back to the content CSS, I'm just going to add a little bit of margin to the top, just so it's not um, intersecting with the header. So we'll save that, and there we go. So you can see here, there's the title. Uh, looks, it's weird, but it's um, that's fine for right now. So you can see here, there's the image. There's the Mona Lisa. There's everything. So now what we need to do, though, which is really where we're going to start to see Angular power, is we're going to now generic make this component generic. So how do we do that? So let's go to the painting component again. And now we're actually going to take a look at the TypeScript file for this. So this is where all the logic for a given component goes. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to add two fields. So this is just like a, any sort of class, right? You can add instance method, you can add instance variables, instance methods. And what we're going to do for this is we're going to add two inputs. And what we need to specify here is at input like that. And what this tells Angular is that this component takes an input. And you can actually use this input on the tag of this component itself. And I'll show you that in a second. But we need two inputs to this component. We need a title, which is the title of the painting, which is of type string. And then we also need a image location, just like a location or an image name. That will also be a string. Um, so now what we can do is instead of what we did here, which is generic, we can now reference these variables that we created in the HTML. So the nice thing about components is that this HTML and this TypeScript are sort of bound together. And so what we can do is instead of using just the hard coded Mona Lisa, uh, what we this notation I'm about to use is double bracket like this. And that basically tells the HTML, I'm about to reference a variable or some function in the TypeScript file. I'm not using the string literal. And in this case, we want to use the title variable. So we just put title. So even though like at the moment it looks like it's just going to 
print two brackets and title, what it's actually doing is it's taking the title variable from the TypeScript and putting it there. And then finally, we also want to do the exact same thing for the image name. So once again, these double bracket notation, and then I save that as the image. So now it looks like this. So this is the sort of more generic component version of the painting. Let's just check if there's any questions. OK, so now that we have sort of this generic uh, version, what we want to do now is go back to the content HTML where we added this painting. Because the problem is, um, I think, yeah, so the problem is we aren't now providing it a paint, a title, or an image. We don't have either. So we're going to do that exactly. So to specify input to a component, like from its tag, you want to use these square brackets that just mentions in that's input to the component. And so what we'll do here is we'll do title is equal to, um, in this case, we'll do the Mona Lisa again. And then what we're going to do now is also add the input for the image. And this will be Mona lisa.jpg, and we'll save that. And if we go back, you can see once we refresh it, nothing changed. It's still the same thing, but the, it, what's different now is we made it generic. Now that's important because we have other images with different titles and different image sources that we also want to include here. The problem with that though, is that, well, how you would do that normally in HTML is, okay, I would just take this component and I'll copy it as many times as I need to get that to work. However, Angular has something, a trick up its sleeve that is incredibly useful. It basically has what's the equivalent of a for loop in HTML. And so the notation that we're gonna use here is what Angular calls ng4. So we'll, once again, we'll do our app painting once again, but this time we're gonna add this to it, ng4. Like so, Ooh, why is that? The zoom thing is not getting out of the way for some reason, don't know why. It's literally blocking where I'm typing. <laughs> okay, so ng4, and what we're gonna do here is equal to, this is where we're going to be iterating over something. So we're gonna have to create an array of these paintings that we wanna show. For right now, I'm just gonna type it out even though we haven't created any of the variables and it's gonna be let painting of painting. So paintings, this is where we're going to, this is going to be the list of paintings, which we'll be putting in the TypeScript, but we haven't done that right now. Painting is going to be the instance. So this is like a for each loop. So for each painting in paintings, and it's called painting now. Uh, in this painting object, we're going to have both the, the title input included and so that'll be painting dot title and the image itself as well so painting image just like that so you'll notice for right now it's not it's going to have an issue with it the reason being is because actually not only because there's a missing closing tag but also because uh, we don't have any sort of provider for paintings like we haven't actually created this variable yet so it is, it's still going to show an error here because, as you can see, paintings is not defined. So let's define it. If we go into the content TypeScript, let's create a let's create an instance variable called paintings, and I'm just going to give it the any type, which in TypeScript literally means any object can go here. Okay, and then what we want to do is we'll do it's an array of any object. Now you'll notice there's also a, a function here called ng on init. And ng on init, what this does is when the component runs for the first time, like when it shows up, this function will run. And so this is kind of, you, you can also add stuff to the constructor, but there is some stuff you would rather put in here than in the constructor. So I'm gonna define our paintings here. So paintings is equal to, and I'm just gonna hard code this. So what we're going to do is this going to be a list of generic objects. And so when you see these curly brackets, this just means we're defining like a object. And I'll do title. I'm 
Mona Lisa, image Mona Lisa dot JPEG. Okay. Oh, and by the way, if you're referencing any instance variables inside of functions, you must use the this keyword. You cannot get away without using that. So once again, let's go back to the website. And you can see, once again, nothing's changed because we still are only doing this Mona Lisa image. However, um, let's now add the other images because now we're iterating over this function. So we can now add all the rest of our images. So let me take a look at my, oh, now we need to delete that. Take a look at the assets folder and we'll add the other images. So we have American Gothic. And I just named all the images exactly the same as their title, except not capitalized and added an underscore if there's a space. So American Gothic, Mona Lisa is next after that. Then we can just keep copying this. So I'll copy this four more times and we'll add the rest of the images. So retrospect. Skull. Soup can. And then finally, let's add Starry Night. OK. So let's save that and let's see what happens. So now you can see here are all of our paintings here. And all the HTML that we used, if we go back to the content HTML, this is all that this is just this little chunk of HTML, but it's it, it's allowing us to iterate over this array and create and create copies of this component multiple times. And this is what allows us to do this. Um, let me just really quickly clean up how these look. So if we just quickly go back to painting CSS, um, I'm gonna make the margin auto for the painting. I'll hide the overflow. And then also, I'm just going to quickly increase the font size a little bit here since it's just really small. OK. And actually, let me also censor the text. OK, so this looks a little better. So now we have all of our images um they're all here and you can see they all have their respective names and their respective images uh, so much like how in normal programming we also have for loops angular also allows for if statements so this an if statement will sort of allow you to conditionally show part of a component or show a component or hide it based off of a boolean value so what we're going to do is in the painting component I'm just going to create a toggle that's going to be used to either show or hide the title of the painting. Just something really simple. So we'll start with the p tag. Um, and we'll do ng if. And so this is where we'll put our conditional. This is where we'll put like a Boolean statement or value. So in this case, we're going to be creating in the TypeScript in a second, we're going to be creating. Um, show title it's going to be a boolean value so what we'll do is if show title is enabled if it's true we're going to want to show the text hide title so that like um this will allow us to hide the title when we press this it won't do anything right now since this is just a non-reactive p tag but we will change that in a second so let's add another one that's the opposite so when the title isn't showing we'll show the text show title like that and then finally to the actual title itself we'll just do ng if show title so if show title is true then show the title then show this html so now uh just really quickly i'd like to make these reactive and there's a really nice quick way that angular allows you to interact with these by using uh a click so this is what it looks like. And if you see these parentheses, this is basically saying output. So like this component is outputting something. 
And so what this, this is saying is it's outputting a reaction to the click, to if you click on this component. And so what is going to happen when we click on it? So what, what we'll do is if we click on the hide title text, it should hide the title. So I'll set show title to be false. And on the opposite end, when we click show title, we want that to be true. And then finally, let's go to the painting component TypeScript. And I'm just going to add quickly a Boolean value here. That's just going to, oh, not, yeah, actually, yeah. We're going to add a Boolean value here, show title. And I'm going to initialize that to false. Now, I mean, I could initialize it in the ng on init, but you can also do it this way. Um, if you want to give it some default value. So I'm initializing it to false. So if we go back, uh, we can see here, they all start with show title because I initialized it to false. But if I click on this, you can see, okay, now the title's showing up, but now it also says hide title rather than show title. So you can see here and notice that how it reacts is independent. So all these components, even though I hit show hide title on this component, it didn't do it for the others because all of them are sort of independent of each other like that. All right. So, I mean, that gets really down to the idea of what components do in Angular. I mean, this idea is that you, it can really help you reduce uh, the CSS, uh, can really help you um, to make your code, not the CSS, it can help you reduce your HTML code. It can just, it's also great for just organization purposes that it really allows you to, um, it really allows you to um, just keep every individual part of your program into some small folder. So I do have more, but we are kind of running out of time. So if any of you don't, if any of you uh, need to go, you certainly can. Um, but if anybody would like to stay, and I have just sort of a few more things to cover that shouldn't take too much longer, hopefully. I just, uh, the setup time for this was a little bit um, longer than I expected. Okay. So the last thing that I want to talk about for this workshop is I want to talk about something called services. So this is another really powerful concept of Angular. And so a service is, uh, once again, it's sort of an abstract idea. Um, it can be used for a couple purposes. For one, uh, one of the purposes is it can be used to, um, as sort of like a back end for maybe if it has to communicate, your app has to communicate with like a web server, or it has to download some things in the background, a service is really helpful. A uh, service is also really helpful if you want to sort of have two independent components sort of communicate with each other because that's not always very easy. And the nice thing about services is there's always, when you create one, there's always only one instance of it. And that instance, if you inject it into other components, will be shared by everything it's injected into. So if there's only one instance. It's sort of this nice place where you can share data between components. So that's what we're going to be doing next. So what we're going to do is go into go back into VS Code. We're going to go uh, into the terminal that's not running ng-serve. And now we're going to generate a service. And it's very, very similar to how we generated a component, except instead of component, we put service like this. And then we'll give it a name. I'm going to be calling this service, and I'll explain why in a second, search. So what, I, what I'd like to add to this app is I want to add a search bar in the header so that I can search for a title of a painting. Now, the issue with this is that not the header and the content components are not nested within each other. They're actually on the same level. If you go to the app component, they're on the exact same level with each other. But the issue with that is, so they don't, they don't really have any sort of way to directly communicate with each other, but we're doing the search in the header, but the result of that search has to show up in the content. So this is when using a service is really important. 
So as you can see, once we generated the service, it only generated two files instead. It generated a spec TS file, which is just for testing. We can ignore that. And it also generated a search service. And this is the actual service. So in this service, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a list of all of the paintings. And then separately, I'd like to have a list of search results that are a list of paintings based off of our search text. So what I'm going to do is if you go to the content uh, component TypeScript, we're going to we're going to take this paintings array and we're going to move it to the search service. So let me do that right now. And I'm just going to hard code this in. We don't need that. OK. So you can see here, I just added this. Uh, this will be constant. We're not going to actually change uh, this uh, array. What I am going to also add, though, is a results um, is a results array. And that's this is just going to be an array of paintings based on our search results. There's going to be our search results. Uh, and you can see I'm not initializing it to anything right now, but in the constructor, which is what's going to be run when the service starts up, I'm going to initially set the results to be equal to the paintings array. Now, one extra thing I'm going to be adding is this function called splice, and that's going to create, uh, why is it not liking that? So, if, oh, I think I need to. Hmm. That's strange. Right, and necessary. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not splice. It's slice. There is. That's a weird thing. There is. There is. There is actually a function called splice, and it does something different. But slice. What this is going to do is it's going to create a copy of the array because we don't want this to be a reference. Like if the, if if we didn't put slice. What would happen is the results and the paintings would actually point to the same array. And so we, when we made changes to the results, it would delete some of these. But we, we want to maintain a list of all, all of the images. So right now, we just create a copy and put that into results. OK, and so another thing we want to do is, well, let's create a search function because we want to search for an image. So what we want to do is we'll create search I'll have search text as input, and that will be a string. It will return uh, nothing at the moment. So, oh, I'm sorry, that's, yeah, so it'll return nothing at the moment. So it just returns void. So uh, you could just copy this code verbatim. It's um, not super important to at least understanding the concept of a service. So I'll set the results to blank before we start a search. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate over uh, the list of paintings that we, the all paintings list here. So we'll do for constant painting of this dot paintings. And then here's what we'll do if painting dot in this case title uh, lowercase to lowercase hold on painting title why is it not showing that up so yeah if we'll do if painting dot title includes includes this dot hold on not actually search text so all this is checking is like if the search text is included in the title, then we'll add the painting to the results array. So that that's all this, this is doing. It's just a very basic. I could make it so that it compares it in case insensitive, but I'm not going to, for time, I'm not going to bother doing that. Um, OK. So once we have that, we have the search function. What we, what we first want to do is we want to change where the content component is getting its data from. Because you can see it still has this blank 
paying his array, but we don't want it to reference this one anymore. We want it instead to reference that results array from the service we just created. So what we need to do is we need to inject the service into the component. In order to do that, we go to the constructor and we type private search service, and that is of type search service. Now, for some reason, uh, VS Code by default does not like know where to import it from. So just add the line up here where the inputs imports are. Import search service from, and we're going to go up one, hold on. Why is that not in the way? OK, so we're going to import it from, going to go up a folder. And then we're going to do search service right there. OK, so that should import it into, and you can see there, it doesn't have an error anymore. So now what we want to do is we want to get this function. We want to get this array from the search service. So I'm going to create a function called get paintings. Uh, and it's going to, and what this function is going to do is just going to return search service dot results. And then what I want to do is go into the HTML and in paintings, I want to do get paintings instead of just the paintings array in the ng4. So now the provider is going to be this function. And what's nice about this using a function for the provider is Angular will sort of automatically check whether the results function, like this function's return value has changed and will automatically update the view based on if there's been changes. So right now, assuming that I've done everything correctly, this should be still running just fine. So yeah, there's all of our images just as they were, no problem there. But now let's actually start to use this service as it's intended, which is to search. So if we go back to the header component, I'm going to add a quick input of type text. So this is going to be our search bar. OK, so input type text. I'll give it a placeholder of search like that. OK, so that shouldn't look like all that much. Yeah, so I'm not going to deal with styling it right now just because I'm already kind of pushing my time here. So there's our search bar. And we're going to obviously put text in here. And it will result. So what I want what I want it to do is when I do type some string and I hit return, it should change these results based on the title of the image. So going back, we want to actually add some functionality. The first thing I want to do is go into the header TypeScript, and we're going to create a function called search. And in this search function, what it's going to do is uh, it's going to take our string from the search field, and we're going to input it into the service. So the first thing into the search service, I mean. So we want to inject the search service like we did in the content provider, in the content um, component. Here. OK, now for some reason, once you import this once, like, because we imported it in the content, it automatically kind of knows where to find it now. I don't know why VS Code works like that, but that's just kind of, that's one of the quirks of it. Another thing I'd like to do is create a variable that is, that will, is actually the search text in the field. So I'll just do search text string. I'll initialize that to blank. So what I would like, if I can, is to use the, to bind this variable to that input field that we just did. And Angular has a way of doing that. That's something called two-way binding. And what that ultimately means is I can set the search text somewhere else, and it will update it on the HTML. It'll update it there. So like it'll also receive it from other places. But if I change the text using the input field, it will also update the search text variable. So that's sort of the idea of two-way binding is it's, it can both accept this search text variable as an input and an output. So it will bind this variable to the content. And to do that, 
we need to go back to the HTML and we're going to do the following. So use a square bracket parentheses ng model. And we're going to set that equal to our search text variable. What this is going to do, this is going to bind this variable's value with this with uh, this input field. Now you'll notice it gives an error saying it can't find ng model, and that's because we need to import it. So what you want to do is if you notice there's a app module ts file here, and what we want to do is uh, once you get to this file, we're going to add an import statement. And it's gonna, we're gonna input forms module from Angular forms, just like that. And then in this import section down here, we're just going to add forms module. Okay, so now there's no more error, which is nice, but right now our search bar doesn't really do anything right now. So let's go back to the types. Uh, yeah, actually to the HTML. And I would like this input function. I'd like the, this input tag to run that search function we're writing in the header TypeScript when we hit enter. And a really quick way to do that in Angular is just do key down, which this is just when you press a key down and we're going to specify a key in this case, the enter key. And the reaction to when we hit the enter key will be search. We'll just run the search function that we create that we're going to create in finish. So go back to the TypeScript. And what we want to do here is we're going to write the search function. And all we're going to do is we're going to reference the search function in the search service here. And then we're going to pass in our search text as the parameter. Just like that. OK. So let's go back here and let's see whether it worked. So maybe I want to just search American Gothic. I hit enter. And you'll notice now that that's the only image that showed up because none of the others have that in their title. If I delete it and hit enter again, all the images show up. They're back. Um, maybe I type like just MO for Mona Lisa and Mona Lisa is the only one to show up. So you can see that, that even though the header component and the content component were are sort of independent, we used uh, the search service here in order to sort of make them communicate with each other. So obviously kind of what I've explained about Angular is still, you know, these are basic concepts like a for loop and if a service, but these like simple features really allow you to make some incredibly powerful um, websites, web applications. Um, and certainly, if you're interested in web development, I mean, I know I've done quite a few personal projects in Angular. I think it's a really great framework to work with. Um, and, you know, there are others out there if you want to check them out, like React and Vue.js. But I personally have had most experience with Angular. And I think that it's just a really great way to organize and to create web applications that are sort of modern, that run very well, that are, I think, just work exceedingly well overall. And that's really all I have. I'm sorry this ran a little bit over time. I kind of expected that just because of uh, installation issues and many other things. But uh, for the people who did uh, stay to the end, thank you for that. But uh, yeah, I can. Uh, you guys can go now. Thank you guys for attending. Hey, I had a quick question. Yeah, sure. So what would you say is the best way to learn Angular? Um, so for uh, I would say, uh, aside from kind of what I already discussed, Angular on their website has something called the Tour of Heroes, which is like their tutorial. Mm -hmm. And I that's like how I got my first introduction to Angular. I would highly recommend taking a look at that. It's very simple to follow along. Um, and I think it gives you a really in-depth look at the Angular framework. Uh, is there like big differences between like e different versions of Angular? Um, there, well, so I don't think there's massive differences between them. I, I usually just stick with the latest one, but they don't, they don't change. The features are not usually massive between the, between different versions. Yeah, yeah. So like my university offers me like a Coursera account. Mm -hmm. The thing is like most of the courses on Angular are very 
like from 2016, 2017. So I don't know if like I would have any problems with it. Yeah, that should be fine. The only thing I might mention is just make sure that you're not looking at Angular JS. That's sort of the predecessor mm. to Angular, and they still offer it, but like. I think Google's trying is has like since moved away from Angular JS. It's Angular, like just Angular oh, yeah. that they're working with now. So just make sure I, as long as it's not Angular JS and it's just straight Angular, you should be fine. I think for the most part. Great. Thank you. Let me stop sharing my screen for a sec. Let me take a look at some of the... All right. Okay, I'm gonna stop recording.